I have a very simple understanding of belief. It is this. Belief is swallowing the whole wafer. I know you've never read that definition in a book, Bible commentary, or religious magazine. I doubt that you've ever heard it in a lesson or a sermon. But for well more than a decade now, that has been my understanding of belief. Belief is swallowing the whole wafer. Maybe I should give you some background. One of my dearest friends of many years received his doctorate degree in religion from the University of Iowa. At the time, the school may have had the most rig rigorous religious program of any university or seminary in America. In fact, the standing joke among theologians was that even Jesus would have had trouble getting his doctorate in theology from the University of Iowa. My friend's major professor was a renowned Catholic scholar. After an interesting discussion in class one day, my friend stayed afterward to talk with the teacher about an unanswered question which left him curious. Do you really believe the teaching and tenets of the Catholic Church, my friend asked? Do you embrace them with all your heart? Do you live them? Or do you just show up at Mass and take the Eucharist? The professor kindly answered that question with the same sincere and serious tone in which it had been asked. He looked my friend dead in the eyes and said simply, when I swallow the wafer, I swallow the whole thing. Now I might argue with that man concerning certain Catholic doctrines with which I struggle, but I will not argue with his understanding of belief. Belief is swallowing the whole wafer. It is not just genuflexing at the altar. It is not just receiving the host on your tongue and then walking away from Mass to live totally unrelated to what you just did. If you truly believe that Jesus joins himself to you at the altar in that experience, then you must join yourself to him for the rest of that week, for the rest of your life. It is all or it is nothing. Belief is swallowing the whole wafer. Biblically, you see, there are no half measures when it comes to belief. When I say I believe in Jesus, I swallow the whole wafer, or I haven't believed. Belief is trusting Jesus alone as my Savior. That's the truth about belief. But that's not the whole truth about belief. If Jesus is who we believe him to be, if Jesus is who Scripture tells us he is, and I am confident he is, then even online to participate in worship, to, to receive the word, and then to walk away to live totally unrelated to what we just sang and heard and prayed is not belief. Belief has feet. Belief follows the one it believes. Belief doesn't simply profess a Savior, but pursues a Savior. Belief embraces not just the saving truth about Jesus, but the whole truth about Jesus. Belief is swallowing the whole wafer. There is a consistency and, and continuity to belief. What we say and do on Sundays links to the rest of our week and lives. There is a conviction and commitment to belief. Jesus' lordship and our loyalty translate into daily living. Belief is not the one-dimensional, salvation-only, already-punched-ticket-to-heaven thing that we have made it. If we believe in Jesus and it doesn't lead to following Jesus, then we haven't believed Jesus. Belief is swallowing the whole wafer. Say it another way, belief is not the popular buffet that the modern church thinks it is. You know, the great thing about buffets is that we can take what we want and leave what we don't. The choice is ours. Biblically, however, Jesus is not an item on a buffet table. With Jesus, we take it all or we take nothing. We swallow the whole wafer. We have no biblical warrant to choose those things about Jesus that we like. Savior, healer, helper, comforter, prayer answer, miracle worker. But decline those things that we don't like, like Lord. Lordship is not an optional item. Jesus disallows such dividing of his person. Jesus opposes such a fragmenting of our belief. 
Belief in Jesus without following Jesus is not belief in Jesus. We cannot put our faith in him, but keep our feet from following him. Such an image is foreign to the New Testament. Belief without following is abstract rather than concrete, theory rather than practice, receiving with no responding, church membership without discipleship, assurance of new life without a change in old life. Yet if any person is in Christ, and we are in Christ by belief, if any person is in Christ, Paul wrote, he is a new creature. He lives a brand new life. Belief means something, does something, goes somewhere, gets up and follows Jesus. As Brennan Manning wrote, only he who believes is, is, is obedient, and only he who is obedient believes. In other words, belief is swallowing the whole wafer. If that is true, do you believe in Jesus? Please allow me to place before you quickly three challenges. Allow me to encourage you to ask, obey, and commit. First, ask. Is there anything Jesus has asked me to do that I have not already done? Maybe it is to start doing something. Maybe it is to stop doing something. Maybe it is to surrender something. Maybe it is to serve someone. Maybe it is to say no to a particular temptation. Maybe it is to say yes to Jesus' particular call. Could it be that Jesus has called you to follow and you haven't? Could it be that Jesus has called you to identify with him in baptism and you haven't? Can it be that Jesus has called you to repent and rededicate your life to him and you haven't? Can it be that Jesus has called you to increase your commitment or to even enter the ministry and you haven't? Now, I'm not the Holy Spirit. I, I, I cannot play the Holy Spirit in your life. I can't answer those questions for you. Only you can answer them. Only you know. Is there anything Jesus has asked you that you have not yet done? Second, obey. Do it. Act on it. Give your belief the feet it cannot be belief without. It does no good to ask the right question, answer it the right way, and then not act on it. It does no good to ask, what has Jesus asked me to do that I have not yet done? And to answer specifically, he wants me to give up this particular sin, but not to act, not to obey. If we ask the question and answer it, we must act, we must obey. And that means not doing things we have routinely done in the past. That means don't delay. Oh, I'll get around to it sometime. That means don't rationalize. Oh, it's probably not that big of a deal. That means don't make excuses. But I can't start that or I can't stop that. That means don't give caution a stronger voice than you give to Jesus. Oh, I don't think I could pull that off or what would so-and-so say? Obey, put feet to where your belief is. And finally, commit. Promise Jesus that as he reveals to you new truths about who he is and what he would have you do, you will respond obediently, promptly, and fully. That's how you really believe in Jesus. That's how you really put feet to your faith. That's how you really mature as a Christian. That's how you really follow Jesus and how you really honor God. Obedience is never a one-time affair. We ask Jesus one question, he answers it, we obey, and then it's back to business as usual. In fact, obedience must become business as usual. Otherwise, we don't understand belief. So, I guess what I'm saying is, swallow the whole wafer. Lord God, help us to swallow the whole wafer to make obedience the truth, the pattern of our life. Help us to ask, Jesus, what do you want me to do that I haven't yet done? Help us to ask, then help us to answer and act on it, that we might obey. Help us, please, to swallow the whole wafer. Amen.